Hello everybody, thank you for watching our videos and subscribing for our channels. We showed you many great videos about sailing in Croatia and it was a really good experience and it is over like everything can be over now we want to tell you what was good and what was not quite good the pros and cons the pros One of the things that makes sailing in Croatia particularly good, I think, is the fact that pretty much all of the navigation is line of sight. That is, you can see your destination for that day from the place you started out that morning. So you don't have to lose sight of land if you don't want to at any point. And in fact, there are so many islands along the Dalmatian coast that you could literally spend weeks or even months sailing from one to another and never be out of sight of land and go to a different island every day. So if you are um, a sailor who doesn't particularly want to get out of sight of land or maybe you're inexperienced or relatively new, then it, it makes the Dalmatian coast a particularly good place to sail. It was our first sailing in Croatia and Ben and I were actually uh, worried about docking, but after sailing was over, we decided that it was easy. You can moor here like everywhere, you can anchor like everywhere, of course not every place here in Croatia you can anchor, but anyway. And, of course, you can dock, and we heard that here uh, docking is different than in the United States, or even in uh, BVI, USVI, it is the Mediterranean mooring, Mediterranean docking. But, you know, everywhere, everywhere, every place you go, you get help. We stopped, I don't know, in 12 places probably, and everywhere somebody met us, and they helped us talking. Uh, it doesn't matter if it is the town keys or it is the big marina. Right now you see the town keys. There's no place in the world where the weather is always great for sailing. But certainly, while we were sailing off the coast of Croatia, we had nothing but good weather. It was June, and our weather was consistently great with moderate winds, clear skies, very little or no rain, and just perfect conditions. Now, of course, it's not that way all the time, and in winter, there are there's some very nasty weather in the Adriatic and certainly you can't depend upon anything like the experience that we had. But at least as far as our experience is concerned, the weather in Croatia for sailing just can't be beat. I think everybody who uh, sailed in Croatia or visited Croatia, you can say that towns, islands and coastline is very, very beautiful.
I took quite a few sailing classes over the last few years, and each and every one of them was in the Puget Sound, San Juan Islands, Strait of Georgia area of Washington State and British Columbia. And in that part of, the, of North America, the sailing obstacles are plentiful. There are rocks everywhere, there are some shallows, but mostly rocks, strong currents, and pretty big tidal ranges. So you really have to watch what you're doing pretty much all the time in terms of navigation in that area. Similarly, Zena and I sailed in southwest Florida where we chartered, and there the problem was shallows. There were shallows everywhere. So we were pleasantly surprised by our experience off the Croatian coast where there were almost no obstacles, there were very rarely any rocks to contend with, there weren't a lot of shallows, there was plenty of deep water everywhere, and the currents were mild and the tidal range is not great at all. So it made for a very pleasant sailing experience and it added to all the other great things about sailing in this area. One of the negatives that we experienced in sailing Dalmatian coast was crowded harbors and mooring fields. Um, now, it might not be all that way all the time, but when we were there in June, it seemed like whenever you went into any bay, anywhere, no matter how small it was, where there were a few mooring balls, all of those mooring balls were likely to be taken, or at most, there might be one or two left. And since in many of those bays, anchoring is not really allowed, that made it um, really kind of problematic and made the bays crowded to get into sometimes. And on a number of occasions, we even had to turn around, leave a bay, and go somewhere else. Similarly, town keys were often full or almost full and very crowded. And marinas, including the big commercial ones like the ACI marinas, were very often fully booked and you couldn't get into those marinas at, at all. So crowded anchorages, mooring fields, and uh, marinas were sometimes difficult. Like Ben mentioned, that it is very difficult to dock if boats are close to each other. But it is difficult to leave as well. Right now you see the video that I made in Capri. Our neighbors decided to leave in the morning and the lines were tangled around the propeller. It was a big problem. Everybody helped, of course, but you know, it slowed down us, for example. We wanted to leave uh, the dock, docking area. And like Ben mentioned that many places are full here. We did not go to many marinas because they were full. Like this, for example, Primoshtan, we wanted to dock, but we couldn't find the place. Of course, you know, if you are anchoring, it is free. But if you are using the marina or you are using mooring balls, it is expensive, especially marinas are expensive. Even the town keys marina is very expensive sometimes. Um, but you know, commercial marinas and town keys are different. For example, um, ACI marina is good, has good facilities, but it is expensive. Town keys marinas are cheaper, you can see right here, but don't expect that it will have good facilities like shower or restrooms. It will not, it will not be good. Mediterranean mooring or med mooring is a little scary for a lot of sailors who haven't experienced it and I know it was for Zena and me when we first arrived in Croatia because we had never done it before. In the United States it's not common. You typically moor up alongside to a slip or to a dock and Mediterranean mooring is not at all common. But in the med it is the rule not the exception. 
when people think of maybe having to put out an anchor out the front and then backing up to the dock and tying with two lines or attaching instead of an anchor to the front using a, what's called a slime line or a courtesy line, they often are intimidated by that as we were at first. But after having done it a few times, you find that it really isn't that difficult at all. Now granted, we never had to use the anchoring technique because everywhere in Croatia that we encountered, there were courtesy lines, which you'll see in the video, which you use instead of an anchor to secure the bow of the boat in the position. I, so I don't know, maybe the anchoring technique is much more difficult, but at least with the courtesy lines, it wasn't difficult at all, and we wouldn't hesitate to do it in the future. So if you've stayed with us this long on the video, you've watched what we think are the best things about sailing the Dalmatian coast of Croatia, and some of the things that you should maybe think twice about. But what's the overall conclusion? Well, we can only speak to our own experience, but Zena and I have sailed in the Pacific Northwest of the United States and Canada, in Puget Sound, Strait of Georgia and the San Juan Islands up there. We've sailed in the British Virgin Islands. We've sailed in Southwest Florida. We've sailed in Panama. And now we've sailed in Croatia. And of those five, which include some of the best sailing areas in the world, I would have to say that Croatia probably ranks number one. So for us, it really is a terrific place to sail. At least it was at the time we were there and in our experience. And we can't wait till the time when we can go back. So hope you enjoy it too and uh, see you sailing.